going live we're going live i think we are live yo 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 tell me what you know welcome to the sunshine show Woo! you guys <laughs> you guys you guys i have a very 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 special guest for you today tonight wherever you may roam in the world I have the one, I have the only, I have the most beautiful, the most gorgeous, the most talented, Sarah Walker out of the UK. Sarah, what is going on, girl? And you forgot Kevin too. Kevin and all the pets, they're, they're on this too. They're, they're going through this. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce us to your pets. I, I mean, I would try, but he's definitely going to knock everything off this table, so like instantly. <laughs> just boom. <laughs> You have Kevin the boardy the border collie, right? Yeah, Kevin, Kevin and Perry the cat. Like, I don't know if if you're up to date with the '90s UK movies, but Kevin and Perry, that's that's the gist that we went for. Awesome! And then tell me about your cool fish behind you. Um, there's not they're not that interesting. Like people are so interested in them, and they look really pretty, and they're pretty tame. Like they follow you around and stuff. But they're not that interesting i mean they're more of an or ornamental pet as opposed to a pet you can play with i mean you can feed them but that's pretty much it yeah yeah um, they're quite fun though when i play my bass if i sort of wander around the room which you do quite a lot if i'm over here they'll be over here if i'm over here they'll be over here hence why they're always like here in yeah. the video because i'm over here but yeah they're uh they're, they clearly like the bass playing <laughs> and your dog clearly loves his little squeaky ball. I, know, he's so excited. I think he's more excited than me to be. Hang on, let me. Uh, he's on my lap. Like he's so excited. Hi, I, Kevin. I, he just wants me to play with the toys, but you know, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I am so happy to have you here with me today. I know we've been trying for about a year to get this interview going, so we finally made it happen. Yeah, like. As I've said like a hundred times, probably more than a hundred times, and and Don knows as well. I'm just like, I I I'm so flattered. I'm flattered and I'm honoured that you guys want to talk to me. But at the same time, I'm like, but why? Like, there's so there's so many like ridiculous people that you've spoke to, ridiculous people that you've had interviews with. Like some of the names I've seen, I'm like, oh my god, like oh, it's so cool that she gets to sit and talk to all these people. And then you messaged me and you were like, oh, would you do an interview? And I was like, uh, what? I was like, A, what would we even talk about? B, like, surely you have a, a list of 10 more other people you want to talk to. But at the same time, I was like, this is so awesome. Like, I get to sit here, I get to talk to you. Like, it's crazy. It's mental. Awesome. It is so awesome. I'm so happy to have you here. And you just have a really large fan base. And no matter what you think, girl, there are so many fans. <laughs> So many people you inspire and motivate every day and don't ever take that away from yourself because so many people look up to you. So many people look at your videos and how far <laughs> you've come in such a small amount of time. And that's what I just want to talk about. I want to talk about all things Sarah today and it's your show, girl. Okay, let's look in the <laughs> chat. Let's look in the chat and see who's joining us. We got Lindsay, my wife in the chat. We got Don McDaniel. We got David Hammer. We got Mama Can too. We got Doctor Funk in the house. That's oh my god! Like I literally I shared on like Instagram and Facebook. Like oh my god, everybody stop what they're doing. Doctor Funk has actually commented on like something or like seen my video or like I was like everybody needs to stop and appreciate this because this is ridiculous. Like how <laughs> amazing is that? I used to sit like obviously you sit you scroll through Facebook you scroll through Instagram you sit and you watch everyone's videos. And I used to sit and they would come up and I'd literally just be like, you know, when you're just jaw open, like dribbling and like you, you kind of come to after a few minutes and like, OK, like I'm just totally lost in this video. And I'd watch his play and I'd just be like, that's insane. Like, this is so crazy, especially when like he's busking and stuff and he's just sat on the side of the street and he's just like just bringing out all these amazing riffs and grooves and they're just constant and you're just so captivated. And then I was like you get to like chat and interview him and he's like i'll be there i'll be watching and i'm like oh my god what is going on yes my life <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the sunshine show did i just make a match is it matchmaker here for sarah and dr funk maybe <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's see who else we got in the chat. We got Andy Goodwin. We got Dave. What's up? We got Paul from Colorado. We got Eddie from Colorado. What is up, everybody? Do you have any questions for Sarah Walker? Drop them in the comments and we will get straight to them as soon as we can. Now, Sarah, for those who may not know who you are, give us a little bit of an intro. Oh, that's so difficult. <laughs> you I got really know. Girl. You got this. I I don't really know what to say. I mean, there's not a lot to me. Like, <laughs> okay. I'm a how about, freak. Okay. Well, how about so? Where are you, where do you live, and how did you get inspired to pick up the bass? Okay, so um, I was born in Newcastle. I now live way further down south in the UK than that. Um, but yeah, so I was born in Newcastle, and ever since I can remember, from like a super super young age, like I don't know, like three four maybe my my dad is a ridiculous bass player it was like constant so my house had bass playing in it pretty much 24 7 so i'm like i, I think this is where i get sort of my music taste and stuff from because he was constantly about all the 80s and stuff because obviously that was what was going on then sure um and it it wasn't even like uh oh this is amazing like i want to play the bass it was just sort of like normal I just felt like, oh, everyone plays the bass or everyone plays an instrument. And then you start doing it and you enjoy it so much that it's just like, it's not even like a, a I want to do this. It's just like, this is just part of me now. Sure. And it's, uh, it's weird when you meet people that don't play instruments or don't have that much music in their lives because you're just like, you can't relate. But then on the other hand, you speak to another musician or you, you speak to somebody else that really appreciates music, even if they don't play something. And you instantly connect, like you're, you can just have any conversation. You can just get each other like instantly. It's just, I think, yeah, it's just amazing. That is awesome. So once again, we have a guest here that comes from a musical background, a musical family. And I cannot stress enough how important that is to give your children that music to listen to, to inspire them to pick up an instrument, to show them the way because music, <laughs> brings love and peace into the world right Sarah unless I mean I have a huge memory of it being like so in in uh, in the UK we have like SATs which are like um I don't know what they'd be in America um is it the testing yeah yeah like like school the tests testing? and stuff oh, yeah. like the really important ones so I'm like 15 16 obviously I still like music I'm, I'm playing the bass of it but it's like the day before my exams and it's like 2 a.m and my dad is just blasting out this 80s bass like over and over and over again. He's like, he's learning for a set or something and it's constant. And I literally walk in and I'm like, oh my God, I have school. Like, I love it, but I have school. And he's just like that bass, bass all day, every day. Like there's nothing else. <laughs> wow, how cool is that? So does your dad still play bass? Yeah, he still plays. He's, he's not very up to date with like the world now. He's very much stuck in the 80s, like double denim, just, you know, yeah, very much 80s. But um, and that was the yeah, best still, decade, Sarah. The I, know, I, I mean, I wish I wish I got to experience it more than just listening to the music and like, you know, seeing photos and stuff. But it is what it is. But yeah, he's he plays every day just for himself. I'm like four or five hours every night just like for himself. Wow. But yeah, I don't think he'll ever lose it. It's just so inspiring. It is super inspiring. And obviously my bass, the VJ that I play is from him. And I never thought, it was always like a running joke in our family. I was like, oh, you know, when you die, that'll be mine. Like I'll, I'll have it finally. And he was like, never, never, never. You know, you won't look after it. And you know, it's it's uh, like super expensive, super rare, like no way. And then he recently, um, like last year or so, he gave it to me and I was just, oh. And, they, and it's like one of the nicest basses I've ever played. And I like it's my most prized possession. Like, and it's even more inspiring because it's like, okay, he's actually given it me now. So like I just want to play as best I can just for the bass. Oh like, it's, that sounds so cringy when I think about it. <laughs> I love that. That's like the realest answer you could have ever given for sure. Um, so I have a little update here. Dr. Funk says he's single, so <laughs> I didn't even mean it. Like, I didn't even mean it in like a in like a, a, a romantic way I just meant like you know I'd sit dribbling over the bass playing like as lame as that is it'd just be like oh my god like look at this guy play 
Well, I bet you guys could do a duet. That would be really nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd just, like, just be sitting on root notes in the corner, be like, bet you just go ahead and take it away. <laughs> well, let's see who else is in the chat. We got Daryl here. We got Amelia, my bestie from Austin, Texas. Uh, Dave says the green base. Everybody does know about that green base. Sarah, you are famous for that green base. Uh, Eddie says the Brits love to get down. Is that true? I mean, define get down because that can mean so many different things. Eddie, but yeah, no, that. British people, I think they're very much appreciative of like live music and stuff. I think we don't we don't have as much of it as like America. I think it's because it's so much smaller. Like in America, you can travel, you can like fly to basically a, a, it was almost like it's a different country and it's just a different state. Like sure. whereas the UK, we're so small, so we don't have as much so we appreciate it more obviously if you're if you're into like music a lot you appreciate it a lot more because it's not as widespread like there's only a couple of venues in my local town that really have like good like jam nights and stuff like that so everybody that does go to them is like super passionate because it's like that one time a week you get to just play and enjoy the live music yeah so uh, i guess that means that we like to get down i if think that's so. how you would define it <laughs> I think you guys really like to get down, um, but Dr. Funk says he feels rejected here. So Sarah, oh, no. <laughs> what am I? Started? I'm going to get cancelled. I haven't even started, and I'm going to get cancelled for being like <laughs> heartless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next time we're going to do the dating game with Dr. Funk and Sarah Walker. Please join us for no, a really good time. On, this is bad. <laughs> you know, on that, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen Friends. I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure it's probably quite big in America. Yeah. You yeah. know, when Joey does that interview and he has all his mates like ready to jump in if they if he says something awful, like I don't have anyone I'm on my own, like I, I need help, like I'm so bad <laughs> at putting my, putting my foot in it and saying the wrong thing. That is like me all over. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, we got Andy Goodwin in the house. What's up, Andy? Uh, we got Lane Patterson who says Sarah is also famous for some awesome bass playing in a wide variety of styles, very versatile basses. Tell us a couple of the um, styles that you enjoy playing. Oh, everything. Literally, like it sounds, it's, I hate this so much. Like, you know when someone says, oh, what kind of music do you like? And you go, oh, I like everything. There's, there's a lot of people that do say, oh, I like everything. And then like, okay, we're talking like black pirate metal to like 80s cheese and they're like oh no no well that's different and it's like well no you say you like everything if you like everything but yeah I definitely like everything I think if there's if there's a good enough beat and a groove I'm more than happy to play on it whether it's like pop funk reggae anything like if there's a catch in there that can hook you in with like whatever I'm down to play so I don't really have like a specific style that I like playing it's just anything that you can sort of groove to, which is so widely, like, even like, you know, you can get like really melodic metal, metal um, that you can, that has like a groove, like underneath. And if you can find that, you can really enjoy it. But it's, I am one of those people that are like, oh, I like everything, but I like <laughs> this trick. <laughs> Very cool. We got David Pastoris in the house. He says, what's up? Great playing, Sarah. Like, what? <laughs> I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's so crazy like i can't what <laughs> and then we have amelia ty saying i like your shirt always i was really worried that i was gonna wear it and people were gonna be like why have you got a shirt on that's covered in like pictures of steve carell or they're gonna like put in the comments oh, i hate steve carell like why are you even wearing that like i'm glad that people get it i'm glad that the office is a big enough thing that people get it <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Cal Moonwater says, I enjoy every song you play, Sarah. Thank you for sharing oh. talents. I'm so sorry, my dog is out. You are um, fine. Yeah. You're fine here, girl. Uh, let's see. Dave I see. I see sometimes I'll see like the views and I'm literally just like, but what? What? Like, why? <laughs> uh, it, it started off so stupid that it just, it still baffles me that people are, are interested in it, especially when like, I'm just just having fun. Like it's, it's nothing serious. It's weird, like. 
maybe it's some sort of escape from real life to get deep and, and awful. Well, and, and it's very therapeutic, you know, music is therapeutic for people, um, both fans and the musicians playing it. So I think that there's a little bit of therapy around seeing the videos and how well you're able to adapt to your instrument and then bring that to your audience. And you have a huge audience. Um, real quick, let's tell Axel hello. Say hi to Axel, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so distracted by my dog. I'm sorry. You're fine. You're fine. What's up, Axel? I love you, honey. I hope you're having a good day. What's up, Megan? Um, let's see. Bruno, that's it. Music and music. Doesn't matter the style. We got Carlos from Portugal. Uh, Don says humble greatness equals a rock star. And I have to agree with that. Yeah, there's nothing. Nobody likes an ego. Nobody uh, likes an ego. Dang. I think one thing one thing I've always tried to bear in mind, like always, like I get so excited when I can play something difficult. It means like a lot to me. And it, it doesn't even have to be that I've spent like two days like working on a riff or something. But when I can play it, I have like a everybody. Well, hopefully everybody can relate to that buzz you get when you're like, oh, my God, I did it. Oh, I nailed it. I got it. it sounds so good. Like it's like an inner thing. Like it's just like an inner warmth. Um, but even after that, it's like I've always got something in my head that there's like not in like a horrible way but there's always someone that's like a hundred times like a hundred million times better than you and it's not it's never about trying to be the best or like you know being it being able to go around and say you know I'm better than you or you know I can play this you can't play it but all of that horrible negative stuff it's just you have to I think it's really important to remember that there's always someone out there better than you and it shouldn't be about striving to be the best it should be about making yourself happy and I think when you make yourself happy that's when other people get it like you can see someone play like the simplest bass line or like the simplest guitarist and if they're like really enjoying themselves you immediately like suck that in and you're like yeah I'm having a great time and it could be like the most simple thing so it, it's, I don't think it's ever about like it, having an ego I just hate egos they suck yeah yeah uh, so Dr. Funk wants to see the doggy Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, if this goes terribly wrong and I break something, I'm blaming you, like, <laughs> completely responsible. Let's, uh, I'll see if you'll get on my lap. I don't know if you will. Have a look. Right, we're ready. Are you going to jump up? Properly, though. Don't bring me a toy. I don't want a toy. Ready? Oh, we did it. We did it. <laughs> oh, what a cutie. <laughs> He doesn't really like the bass playing too much. It's not that like before anyone calls the RSPCA or whatever, it's not like it's too loud and it hurts his ears. He just, I think it's an attention thing because he knows that I'm not going to fuss him at all or really give him much attention. He usually just goes, oh my God. <laughs> he usually just goes and lights down for a bit. So when he's in a video, I'm like, I get excited because I'm like, oh yeah, he wants to like, he's enjoying it, yay. Um, but yeah, he usually just disappears, but he's very excited. He's more excited than me. <laughs> I think you can tell how excited I am. And it's like coming out in his. Look at his little face. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Thank so you. Jumping. Thank you. So <laughs> that was Kevin, right? And then That's we have Andy, Andy. Andy Goodwin says, and you have a cat named Perry. Yes. Yeah. He's a, hang on. I'll, I'll, he's like a typical cat. Like if I pick him up, he will just scratch my face off. So uh, <laughs> he's in his cat tower up here. Oh, cool. He's, a, he's the wire fiend. So any any leads that are around, so like my pedal or my bass or something, he's on the prowl and he just like jumps on them and starts chewing and stuff, which is why I'm like, go away. He's the one I want to keep away from everything. But yeah, he <laughs> sees like a, a cable waggling around and he's right in there. Sure. So uh, Dave says that, uh, when are you going to do a Zappa cover? A Zappa cover? I mean, it's like it's hard like I do get a lot of people messaging me saying oh can you do this cover oh I'd love to see you. oh like oh it's my birthday will you please cover this for me and I'm like I feel so awful like I feel bad for not doing it and doing every request that I get because I really wish that I could but I mean a it's finding the time to actually sit down and do it and uh b it's it's a weird one for me like I because I, I don't like you know you see a lot of videos and stuff of people playing and sometimes it's just a bit over the top and you can tell a lot of it's quite fake. 
like I try so hard to stay away from fakeness and if I'm not in the mood or if I'm not in the mood to make a video or whatever I just want to sit in my pajamas with no makeup on and eat junk food then I'm not gonna start dancing around my living room when it's not the mood that I'm in so sometimes it does like purely go off mood so if I do listen to a song or like um someone asked me to play a song and I'm not really in the mood for it or I just can't get that excited about it I have I just can't do it like it's not that I can't play it or I don't want to play it it's just I'm not in that particular mood so like I'll pick my covers off literally like just driving around in my car I'll, I'll hear a song or a song will come on shuffle and I'll just get so excited and like all I'll think about for the next two days is like playing it and then I'll be like, oh, I've got to make a video with this because I'm so excited about this song. And it, I think it just comes out in the song. Like, it's weird. Sure. But like, I don't, it's, it's like an itch you have to scratch. Like, I can't, like, until I play that song and, like, have a great time, like, just playing it and just being stupid in my living room. Like, I can't, it, it's like, it's like an itch. And then I do it and it's like I've scratched the itch and it's great. <laughs> That's awesome. He says, okay, <laughs> we'll settle for some ecstasy. XTC. Oh, XTC. Oh, I love XTC. Yeah. That sounds awful. What a terrible band name. Just gonna sit here <laughs> on the internet. Like, oh, yeah, I love XTC. It's so great. <laughs> no, but they're, they're such a cool band and they're not even that well known either. Like they're not, I think they were big in the 80s. Uh, but now, like I tried to speak to quite a lot of people at like my age. So, oh, have you heard this band? And they're like, no. Like, you're, you're not cool. Who are these? But yeah. <laughs> You know, my friend Reed, she just turned me on to them recently as well. And I don't think I had ever uh, heard of them either. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. what is this? This is really cool. Yeah, uh, it's, it's super different as well. It's like um, a lot of that stuff, like a lot of older music, it's, there's, there's been no sort of replacement. Like they've, they, these bands have got big and then died out or whatever and then there's not really been anything to replace them it's sort of it's changed with time and then you, you miss it then you hear it and you're like wow what's this like this is so different yeah absolutely uh dave says sunshine wants to party baby it's always a party here at the sunshine <laughs> show okay let's just be clear about that um uh, James is asking Sarah, who are your biggest influences as a bassist? Oh, I knew this was going to be a question. I was thinking, I was like, okay, so I'm not in any big bands. I don't, you know, I'm not doing all this crazy stuff. I, I was like, I just, I just know that I was thinking, what are they going to ask me? What are we going to talk about other than like my dog? Um, but I knew this would be a question, but I just, um, I'm going to give you one of those awful cliche answers again and say that I just don't have one. I mean... If anything, my personal sort of influence has been my dad, as weird as that sounds, like just like thinking about him playing and how much he enjoyed it and like how long he did it for and how big of a part of his life was. Like, I, I just love that I can be the same. I can just take that much enjoyment from it and, and just do, do it all over again. Um, but there's no bass players I really strive like, oh, I want to play like them or I want to get that tone or I want to get that sound or whatever like I pretty much I sit and work out my tone depending on what song I'm playing so if it's like a, a Pantera cover I'll, I'll my tone will be completely different from like two days later if I do like a funk cover like the tone will change all the time so there's, there's never a bass player like I that I've really gravitated towards um I think if if you do sort of choose a musician or like a band and be like oh they're my favorite I want to be like them I think it does kind of put you in a box a little bit because not getting involved with the other genres and not getting involved with like the other musicians my talks just coughed everywhere um but yeah not getting involved with the other musicians and stuff there's a lot you aren't doing is if like if you're oh I just play metal or I just play funk or I just play reggae it's like you're missing out on so much like even tone style like little riffs and stuff that you can pick up and steal for your own stuff like you just miss it all if you're just secluded to like one thing so maybe having an influence isn't a, the best idea but I know a lot of people do get into music because they're like oh this guy's amazing and I want to be just like him like sure no I, I love I love the answer that your dad is your biggest influence I think that that is the realest thing that you could have 
uh, answered and I, I love it because when people ask me the same question, it's very hard for me to pick a musician that people know because my biggest influence is my mentor out of Austin, Texas, Rudy Roo. Um, and a lot of people don't know who Rudy Roo is, right? If you don't know, you're going to find out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I love this. Uh, do oh, <laughs> Dr. Funk was asking how old you were. And Jeremy Hill says you don't ask a girl that question. Oh, no, I, I can't deal with, you know, all that. I'm not even like one of those people that it's like, oh, women are equal, like feminine power, all that. Look, like, obviously, that's great. But I'm not one to go out and be like, you know, this is my life. This is important. It's just a thing that is out there. But I don't I don't really care about being asked my age or anything like that like um but yeah I'm 27 um I think a lot of people think I'm a lot younger I do get asked my ID quite a lot when I'm out like to buying things that I you know you need ID for uh but yeah okay. but I know I'm not offended or anything Very I think cool. we should kick I think we should kick Dr Funk out of the chat though like I think we need I think <laughs> Dr Funk we want to know how old you are now Okay. I'm, yeah, that's a good question because I have no idea how old he is. Like, how, can old I, how can I make this love connection happen if I don't know all the <laughs> Why is it? How is it turned into a love connection? Oh my God. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too funny. So we have uh, Dawn in the chat. I want everybody to know. So we love Dawn here at the Sunshine Show at Sunshine and the Base Kids. Um, Sarah loves Dawn. So this is Dawn oh, yeah. for everybody who may not know. Let me put this on the big screen here. This is Dawn flipping me off. Um, and I just love him. And I love to drink water out of this cup and look at Dawn flipping me off because I figure that's what he'd be doing every day in real life anyway. <laughs> I just want to take the time to give a massive shout out to Base Kids because it's like the most amazing thing I've ever known. It's like found in my life. Literally, like obviously playing the bass, blah blah, blah making the covers, blah, blah, people watching them, blah blah blah. But then, like the all these bass groups that existed, I had no idea. Like I only used Facebook for talking to my friends, um, you know, on Messenger, meeting up, all that kind of stuff, or like work related things or whatever. And then I discovered this whole other different side of Facebook of like these groups of these people that everybody loves the same thing, and you can, you know, post stupid memes and like just post things that you think other people are like and they're so much bigger than I thought they were. Like some of them are huge and everyone's so nice, especially when you can find something that like everyone's really passionate about, like base groups and things like that, especially base kids. Like everyone is so positive there. Everyone is just having a laugh all the time. Like there's no seriousness. There's no times you ever have to be like, oh, could I post that there? Or like are people are gonna be weird about it or is everyone gonna like it? Or, you know, there's no, it's just like boom, share boom like just spam yeah. constantly of like total just nothing yeah and it just it like breaks up the day and enlightens it and everyone's so nice to each other and like obviously at the end of the day we're all strangers from like completely different countries but then we're all connected in this weird ridiculous like thing yeah but then everyone shares like a huge passion for base so it's just it's such a nice thing to be part of well thank like, I'm so glad I found it Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate you so much. Don, I know you're out there. Please drop the link for Sunshine and the Base Kids in the comments. If anybody is not a member, please join today. Um, Absolutely. Like, I've never laughed so much at the most ridiculous, like, just nothing. Literally <laughs> nothing. But, it, yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> okay, Dr. Funk gave us a number. He is 29. That's a good, good age right there. We got 27, 29. We're going to set you guys up on a duet um bass solo thing and it's going to be great i cannot wait to see it unfold um <laughs> jason schmidt what's up buddy we got kel moonwater in the house we got carlos don dave we got the whole fam bam if you guys have any questions please drop them in the comments i'm trying to keep up with you guys but you guys are fast uh let's see are there any bands your dad has been in that we can check out anywhere Oh, to be honest, probably, probably not. He was um, obviously in the 80s, um, all that kind of stuff. So he, he was like my age or whatnot in the 80s. So he was living the dream. But obviously no internet, no camera phones, no, none of that. So basically he was, he was in cover bands. He was in tribute bands. He was playing like the, you know, pubs and clubs circuits. 
which then you could make a, you could, it was a good job. Like it was really well paid, regular gigs all the time, really like not easy to get into, but easy to have like a, a good living off. Whereas nowadays, I mean, sure, I, I hope I'm not, I'm going to sit here and be like, yeah, I'm poor, but <laughs> like, hopefully everyone can understand. It's not like it was before. You can't pick up gigs every weekend. You can't be playing three, four shows a week and make, you know, a really good amount of money just doing like pubs and clubs. Like, it's just not a thing. Like you, most musicians that I know, even the really busy ones, they have other jobs, they have day jobs and you have to do both because it's not as big anymore. I don't know if it's because, I don't know if it's to do with like recession or whatever, but I think there's not enough money around for live music that, that places want to pay a lot of money. Usually you have to fight for a good fee, which it never used to be like. So obviously he did a lot of work doing covers and like soul tributes and funk tributes and things like that. But unfortunately it was too long ago to have videos or just any of that sort of stuff. And it was so common there as well. It's like at that time, it was so common for there to be like bands on all the time that it was never, you know, recorded or documented. It was just normal. Like it was just a normal job. Whereas now it's a lot more like there's, there's videos out there, there's YouTube, there's all that other stuff. What, uh, did you ever get to go see dad play live? Um, I've seen him a couple of times, but uh, like as he's got older, so it's not really the same. But if I can go back in time and watch him, that would be, that would be like the weirdest thing, but it would be incredible, like incredible. I still watch him, like I'll watch him play now and like my jaw's on the floor and I'm just like, oh, how, how? But it, unfortunately, I think it must be like a, a father daughter thing. He's never really been able to teach me that much. <laughs> okay. I think so. I, I I would pick up the bass and then, like, he, we had like a home recording studio and all that sort of stuff, which is probably why I'm a bit of like a, I'm a gear nerd at the end of the day. But um, so I've probably got to like 12 or 13, and he was like, oh, okay, yeah, like, I'm going to teach her bass. Like, I'm, I'm going to try and teach her everything I know. And within 10 minutes, there's like doors slamming screaming shouting and he's like I can't teach her no it's not gonna happen can't teach her anything it's not gonna work I think because at that age you're like I want to be able to do everything right now and if I can't do it right now then it's too frustrating but I think as you get older you understand that in order to do those things you just have to work at them that's that's all it is it's just time time and repetition and practice that's all it is but as a as a teenager you don't understand any of that you're like it's your fault I can't do this right now <laughs> but it's a shame but now I'm older I can appreciate he's playing a lot more and I do watch when I do see him play I'm watching for what he's doing you know how he's making the different sounds and all that kind of stuff but I've I've always strived to be able to secretly record him one day and plaster him all over the internet but Aww. probably wouldn't be very happy with me if I did <laughs> gotta make them a secret uh instagram girl <laughs> i know i've been asking him for ages i was like will you please make a video with me just please just one just one before you go before your time's over before you die one video one video yeah but yeah maybe one day hopefully one day for sure let's see we have uh jason schmidt i believe this question i mean it could be for either of us but since it's your show today i'm going to ask you how many tattoos do you have? If it's too personal, don't answer. Just curious. Oh, um, so I, I have. I think I have too many to, to like actually count now. Um, I don't have too many on this arm. I have like my hands and uh, like a stag and and some triangles that mean absolutely nothing. Um, and then this arm is pretty much full almost. So you can't really count very much. And then my legs just have like ridiculous doodles on. They're they're really bad. Anytime I get sort of an impulsive idea for a really weird sort of cartoony rubbish tattoo, I'm like, just put it on my leg because, you know, pair of jeans, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I think um, one of my favorites has to be uh, this one, which is, it's a, it's a cartoon called Mr. Pickles, which has yes! a, uh, yeah. <laughs> so obviously because of Kevin, I was like, and then I saw Mr. Pickles and I was like, I need a Mr. Pickles tattoo at some point. But then obviously it's not the kind of thing you want to be walking around with like on your hand or something. So I was like, leg, always leg. 
<laughs> um, this chat is hilarious. My mom is rolling with this love connection here. And I'll just, yeah, um, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'll let you read the comments later because I don't want you to turn red or anything, girl. No, I've, I've literally stayed away from it. I'm, I'm just staring at your, your, uh, your lovely face and just enjoying <laughs> my living room at the moment. I'll, I'm sure I'll read it all later and wish that I never did any of this, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit about how you got your online presence because you have a very big following i mean i can't the last time i checked it was like a, plenty of thousands of thousands of people that are following what kind of work and dedication does it take to keep up that audience um i didn't like i i can genuinely sit here now and tell you i have no idea a how it happened you can probably get that from the fact that i'm like I have no idea why I'm sat here right now, but yeah, um, it, it, it is one of those weird internet phenomenon that's just like an overnight thing. Like I woke up every, like woke up one morning and there was just loads of views and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I was literally, I was running around my entire family. And like, I still worked at the pet shop at this time. So I'm like running around work, like, look at this, like, you know, 200 people have watched this video. How crazy is that? Like, this is nuts. Like, I'm in my kitchen in my pajamas playing my guitar like this is so odd and then every day I would wake up and it would be more and more and more and more and then uh I just kept doing it and I was like obviously people like it then it was nice to see the encouragement it was nice to see people be like oh I love this song and it's not even like people being oh you play the bass really well or oh your clothes are cool or like whatever it was like I was getting the buzz off people being like oh I love that song because that's why I was playing it in the first place, because I love that song. So I'd be like so stoked to see all these people that like love that song just as much as I do. And I'm like, yes, dude, like it's a sick song. Like I, I'm with you on that one. Like, and that was just really nice. But sometimes it does get difficult because it does feel like, especially with social media, you do have to like keep up. You have to be consistent. And sometimes if you've got stuff going on like at home or like in your normal life that requires a lot more attention, it's difficult to be like, Oh, I haven't played, I haven't made a cover in like a week. Oh, I probably should, but I think I did go through a phase of that maybe like a year ago, being like, oh, like, has it been too soon since the last one? Should I do another one? And then it became just sort of like at the end of the day, it's just like a silly internet thing. Like, I'm gonna play if I want to, I'm gonna play if I find a song that I really like. And then I think just that carefreeness is what's just made it get bigger and bigger. Cause I'm sure. not you do see a lot of people on like social media and a lot of musicians that try really hard and then it just becomes like just I don't know I don't know how to explain you just watch it and you're just like like there's no passion like you can see if there's passion or not I feel so when you don't see it it's kind of it's not as in captivating sure I don't know I could be talking out of my ass no, completely it makes, it makes <laughs> Makes absolute <laughs> sense. Um, Dr. Funk has left the building. Bye, Dr. Funk. Thank you for hanging out with us. <laughs> I but, really am. I didn't defend him. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, he'll be in those DMs later, girl. Uh, and I am interviewing Dr. Funk next month on the 6th again. So everybody make sure to come to that interview. Um, I'll be there harassing him, asking him his age. <laughs> yes girl yes um let's see i'm i am missing these comments and questions and i apologize you guys let me see really quick uh how do you sync the videos with the soundtracks what programs do you use okay i was waiting for like a, a, a gear question so basically i use um i've just got like a pretty standard laptop um the the recording software i use is reaper uh, I use that because it's free and it's the easiest to get your head around. There's so many YouTube videos of like, you can literally just Google, like if something isn't going right or like the latency isn't right, any of that sort of stuff, you can jump on Google and be like, why is this not working? And instantly without sifting through loads of stuff, you've got an instant answer of like step-by-step -step instructions how to fix that. So it's a really good um, software to use because it's so user-friendly as well. And it's not, I think a lot of them, ones like, maybe Pro Tools and like K-Corp and stuff, they're so full of different stuff. Sometimes it's quite overwhelming. And it's the kind of thing that if you go through it and you click a wrong button, you can like totally mess up loads of stuff just by the click of one button, which you don't want. Um, 
but yeah so like i don't really know how to explain so basically like ignore the tv obviously but um so i've got like a power amp here that's basically just for the speakers um under that i've got a a native instrument uh interface it's really basic it's literally like a lot like i think it's got two lineings and that's pretty much it so yeah so i'll download the track and like the file so like a wav or an mp3 um put that into reaper and then plug my bass in so obviously that's playing through the the recording software anyway um i'll graphic eq the original track and cut all the bass frequencies so it's really low Sometimes if it's an 80s track, obviously they've got quite quite a lot of mids. So you can't really get rid of it completely, but you can try your hardest. But um, so yeah, so I'll cut that so the original bass is gone. And then basically play over the top, record it all. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, so, and then render it. So it's all one file. And then I'll record a video on my phone, literally just sat on the side, and then use um, a software, it's an app called UCut. Um, so yeah, I'll load my video up into there, mute all of the original audio, which is hilarious because it's got me making some hilarious noises in and the bass sounds awful as well, but it's through the phone, it's bad. So yeah, so I'll mute all that, download the track onto my phone and just add it onto the video and then just like physically sync it up. Wow. It sounds, it sounds really long-winded now I think of it, but it probably takes me, other than playing the track, 20 minutes to just do it all. Okay. And I'm not like, I'm not big on editing. Like I don't really know a lot about video editing at all. So a lot, like what you see is what you get. It's one take done, hence the mistakes, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I'm not going to sit there and play it like 20 times. So it's perfect. Like, I just want to have fun with it. And I feel like if I play a song 20, 25 times over and over again, by the 25th time, I'm, you're going to see it in my face. That I'm sick of playing that song. Like it's not fun anymore. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I do try and do it all in one like first time just you know go like yeah that's, that's awesome how I, I actually interviewed momo the other night and we talked for over two hours and that was one of his biggest things was that not overdoing the tracking and just sit there and like do it and do it he's like no because then you know that the passion isn't there anymore like whatever you're yeah. going to record it's going to happen in the first five takes like your best you know takes and then after that like it's not even worth it anymore so that's interesting that you brought that up um so i wanted let me read this comment to you really quick um our arjun keenan sorry if i'm um butchering your name he goes i believe most of people who like watching sarah play bass just like how much fun she has while she's playing she also plays a lot of 80s tunes with great bass lines um and then that bass also sounds awesome as well um, I, now, like that. I, I like that a lot of people comment on the tone because uh, a lot of bands that I've played with, the, the guitarists and stuff have come over to me and like, I've never ever seen, a I've never played with a bass player that cares so much about their tone. And I'm like, what? Like, it's one of the most important things. Like, are you serious? Like, you have bass players that just turn up, plug in and like, let's go. Like, that does not sit with me well. Like, tone is so important. I feel like tone makes, a like, you can play anything and if the tone's nice it sounds amazing and then you can play the most ridiculous like impressive expert stuff if your tone's bad all of it is going to sound bad like it's not going to be nice for your ears so I, I like it when people say oh that's such a nice tone I'm like yes like little win for me <laughs> so do you have advice for people that may not be great at perfecting their tone on how to do that I think my biggest piece of advice would be that it does matter to, to hear from the the um the guys that i used to play with to, to hear that there's bass players that don't care about their tone at all like if you're one of those bass players start go go back start with your tone find your sound obviously everyone's sound is different everyone has a sound that they like sound that they don't like and obviously that's different depending on you know your style what you like um but yeah i definitely say the most important thing is to definitely make it a priority and definitely make it important and and just sit and just mess with all the sounds like you can mess with all the different um like mid slows highs just mess with them and find what you like and i feel like you know if, if you're if you've got a musical bone in your body you're going to know what sounds nice and what doesn't like and if you have a bass that's you know not massively expensive or just like basic you can still get a nice tone it doesn't have to be 
a, a stupidly expensive bass to get a nice tone. You just have to sit and work out how to get to that tone, but it's all possible. Yep, absolutely. I love that answer. Uh, Lane Patterson asks, do you have opportunities for being in a permanent band? Would you consider it if the right situation came along? Uh, yeah, definitely. I've recently, very, very, very freshly recently joined um, a band that I'm really enjoying playing with at the moment. I auditioned a couple of times and um, obviously they, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm guessing they watched some of my videos um, and saw that, you know, I, I could play pretty competently. But yeah, I auditioned with, a, with, with them for a couple of times. But the main thing for me was that the, we got on really well. I think even if a band are like absolutely amazing and they're like the most like reputable musicians out there, if I can't get on with them, I don't want to go and spend hours playing with them because it's not going to be very fun. But we hit it off straight away. Like every rehearsal that we've had so far, we're just laughing like the whole time. Like obviously we play and we're playing the songs and stuff like that, but we're laughing a lot and it's just so much fun. Um, and I think that's really important for me. But yes, yeah, so that's a recent thing. So hopefully that goes somewhere which I think it will, because the music is so good. Like it's, it's, you know, it's not really complicated. It's not like crazy prog funk or anything like that. It's just, it's pretty basic indie, but it's so good and it's catchy and it's cookie. And that's what I like. It's just, it's fun to play as well. Like, yeah, we're having a great time. So hopefully that goes somewhere. But other than that, there's just, there's a lot of opportunities popping up all the time, but I just want to be picky about what I do because I don't have a lot of time on my hands and I don't want to, I want to make the most of it, you know? Absolutely. One thousand percent. I want to talk to you really quick about your dream rig. If you had a dream um, amp company that you could work with, a dream guitar company, pedals, strings, straps, what is your dream setup look like? Oh, that's such a difficult one. I don't think um i love my music man bass just just as much my music man bass was one of my first basses that was like you know a proper bass that was bought for me it was a, a an 18th birthday present actually i love that bass it's so meaty and it's so beefy it sounds so good um but obviously the the vj is you know super close to my heart it's got all that sentimental value as well um i guess yeah, so it would always be a vj for me just like and the the carbon fiber neck is so stable it's so it's just yeah, you can get like the lowest action as well. It's just great. I love it. Um, so the bass would definitely be a VJ. Uh, the amp would probably be, I think it'd definitely be a Trace Elliott. Like I've been surrounded by Trace Elliott bass, uh, bass amps for a long time. And they are so like, they can go through a lot. Like they can put up with a lot. Um, so that's always good. I think a lot of the newer amps that you see around, like they're good and they're light and, you know, they're... Uh, they're okay and they sound good, but not a lot of them are built for like, I don't know, just being chucked about and things. I think you find that a lot with older equipment. Older equipment seems to deal with a lot more scuffs and things than newer stuff. So yeah, anything Trace Elliott would be great. Their, their power is great and they sound really nice, especially paired with the right bass. They sound really good. Um, strings, I think Dr. Strings, Dr. Strings are so good. Like a lot of people talk about them and they're like, oh, they're quite expensive though for strings. Like you, you can get just as good quality, um, but you know, cheaper. But I've I've used them for a while now and they just seem to be like, you know, when you buy strings and you get a daddy. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Sure. Like sometimes sometimes you can go with like pretty reputable companies and you you keep getting daddies and you're just like, oh, like that's the one string that I want to sound really nice. And that's the one string that needs the brightness. Like obviously the, the thinner strings don't need the brightness because they're thinner anyway. So you want the thinness from the thick string and it's and when you get it and you open the packet and it's dead and you're just like, oh, for God's sake. But yeah, I, I know I very, very, very rarely have that with doctors. So doctor strings would be the one. Okay. Um, and then pedals, but I'm not really big on pedals. I, a lot of bass players, I've, I've met quite a few bass players that have a lot of pedals. And I think... I don't know, my brain is like elsewhere when I'm playing. So I don't really have the concentration to be like, okay, I want this pedal for this section of the song and then I want to turn it off this bit. So I think that's why I like using um, a multi effects just because it's just easier. It's, it's very, again, it's user friendly. Like I don't want to spend ages and ages like researching equipment and looking in how to work it. I just want to be able to put it in front of me and go, okay, this button does this, this does this, that's it. 
Yeah. Simplify. So yeah, that is a big one for me. <laughs> awesome. So um, everybody out there, we need to go ahead and get the word out and get Sarah some sponsors and some endorsements. Um, so that's you know, I'm just going to be sitting like emailing, posting, but why me? They're going to be like, oh, okay, let's work with you for this reason. And I'll just email back like, why? Like, why? <laughs> we're, we're taking that uh, question out of your vocabulary, Miss Sarah Walker. Okay, that's no longer allowed. Just the way you kicked Dr. Funk out the chat, we're kicking that that question out of your, your vocabulary. No longer allowed. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. Like, I super appreciate everything. This, like all of the stuff that's happened internet wise with the bass playing, it's given me, I just love bass even more now. So, yeah. If anything, everyone's like, oh, you know, I, I I love these videos. They're so inspiring. And I'm sat on the other end, like, you're inspiring. Like, you watching them, that's what's inspiring me. So it's it's like a two-way thing completely for everybody. I love uh, it. Absolutely. Um, Kel Moonwater wants to know, do you provide lessons? Oh, no, I don't. This is a, a thing I've been working on for a while. My theory is bad. Like, same with my dad, obviously, because I learned so much from him just from listening and watching. Um, his theory was never, he knows, you know, basic scales, obviously the notes on the fretboard, he knows the fretboard, that kind of thing. But theory wise, it's not really there, which is, it's it's good and it, it's inspiring in the way of you don't have to be a music theory genius in order to play well or, in, or be able to play live or in a band. It's not 100% necessary. I think that's good to remember, but also it does help a lot so I, something I'm working on at the moment so I don't feel viable to give people lessons when I'm like my music theory isn't that good um but yeah I'm just I'm definitely trying to work on it because it does it opens so many doors and it makes playing a lot easier and a lot more fun because you're less in your head because once you know your theory well it just comes out onto the fretboard you don't have to think about it or you don't have to play as much um but yeah so hopefully maybe in the future in the far far future when my music theory is sound I'd be happy to teach I think it'd be quite fun and quite rewarding but I think I'd feel more I do know a lot of people that do teach others and their music theory isn't so good but I would feel better if mine was <laughs> so there is hope <laughs> is what she's saying folks there is yeah, hope. there will be one day one day I'll be a music theory genius <laughs> So Eugene is asking, he's curious if you do any collaborations with drummers where you've done just bass and drum tracks together. Oh, I really, 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 really want to do this, actually. The more I, the more I think about it, the more I want to do it. And I do follow a lot of drummers. Obviously, being a bass player, like drumming is the next one. It's the percussive, it's the rhythm. Like you're not, I've never really met many bass players that, uh, super into bass playing and music and stuff and they're like obsessing over other guitarists and stuff it's not usually that way it's usually the drummers so my Instagram feed's full of a lot of drummers that I know and like you know that I follow and things like that because obviously it's super interesting to me I see them all the time and I'm like okay that's the next thing I want to do I want to I want to get in touch with the drummer and be like oh can you send me a video or send me a file or something so I can play along and then I can play my own stuff as well which would be fun um, so I do get a lot of people saying, you know, when are you going to when are you going to make something of your own or when are you going to play your own um, or like make something up? And I do at home, um, but I think I just have so much more fun playing like amazing bass lines or amazing tracks that I've heard before. But I definitely want to do my own stuff. But it's finding the, the right drummer as well. Sure. And all of a sudden, Miss Sarah has 100 drummers in her inbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to regret that. <laughs> oh, man, how fun. You guys, we're almost on an hour, so we're going to start wrapping it up here. If you guys have any last minute questions, drop them in the comments. Um, Sarah, one question I like to ask all of my, um, all the people on the show, all my guests, if you could throw a dinner party for any five musicians, dead or alive, what musicians would that be? And what would you serve at your dinner party? Like food? But what food would I say? Oh, that's difficult. That's hard. Um, five. I have to put five. That's loads. Oh my gosh. I was spoiled for choice. <laughs> it's weird as well because I don't know which celebrities are like vegan or vegetarian. So I'm I'm all like, you know, I'll be inviting Prince and he'll be vegan and he'll sit at my dinner party and be like, this is rubbish. I can't eat any of this. 
<laughs> I'll have very, you can have vegetarian <laughs> options, okay? So yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, it's so difficult. It's you so got difficult. this. You got. I believe in you, Sarah. I know, but I, I'll. I'm the type. I'll choose one, and then I'll be like almost. I'll be like about to sleep in my bed, and I'll be like, oh, I missed one out. Like it's actually a thing that's gonna happen. I'll be sat there like, oh my god, missed one out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I think um, Victor Wuin. I would love to just spend ten minutes with Victor Wuin. I watch so many of his videos. And listen, even like when he's not even playing, he's just talking about life. He can talk about life and you just want to listen. You just want to listen. You hang on like every word. Um, so yeah, even to spend five minutes with him would be amazing. Prince, always Prince, ridiculous musician. Like just, yeah, I would just be in awe. I wouldn't be able to say anything. I'd just be sat there like, oh my God, it's Prince. Um, oh, it's so, it's too difficult. I don't know whether to go with drummers. Or bass players or guitarists or front people. It's, uh, we're taking we're taking a deep dive into your mind, girl. The deep into dive. Mind. Mind. They're all gonna be bass players, aren't they? I'm gonna feel bad. I'm gonna leave out all the drummers. <laughs> well, you gotta invite Dr. Funk to your part. Oh no, he's not invited. <laughs> he's not even on the guest list. He's like outside. They're like, oh no, you're not coming in. Sorry. You're like on the do not enter list. Um, but no, so yeah, there was uh, Victor William Prince, uh, Mark King. I want to spend some time with Mark King. That would be insane. That would be ridiculous. Like 80s slap bass champion, always, forever. Uh, um, are we talking just musicians? Well, if you want to invite a comedian, <laughs> an actor, you're, whoever you want, girl, this is your party. Okay, right. So we've got, we've got I'm trying to imagine more that on a table as well which is not helping so we got Victor Moon, Prince, Mark King, I've got two left, who are we going to go for, who are we going to go for, Elvis Costello, I want to spend some time Elvis Costello, he's a legend, total legend, super cool, uh, uh, oh Jacko, it's got to be Jacko, Perfect. I feel like they'd all get on really well, probably not, <laughs> hey, maybe there'll be a, a fight at the party, that's always fun, yeah, that is fun. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And then food. I mean, purely for me, it's going to be some kind of duck dish. Anything with duck in it would be amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like everyone probably is on the same page with that. But, you know, it's my dinner party. So <laughs> if they don't like it, they can leave. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, girl. I like I like every, everything about you. Everything. <laughs> um, hell yeah, dude. I've had hella fun with you. Um, so where do we find you on your social medias how do people get in touch with you what's the deal um so yeah any any of the facebook pages i'm a lot slower on the uh the sarah plays a bass page i'm not good at that like obviously we talked about how much i hate egos i do not have an ego but i get hella messages on there like i get so many and i have to take a good debt like i have to sit down for a whole day and sit on my laptop and go through them all and I try to reply to everybody. I try to reply to as many as I can. Um, it just, it takes a long time. And if I, if I don't have time and like a week passes and then another week passes, it's, it's more and more and more. So it takes then longer to do it. So, so yeah, I'm bad at that. Um, my personal Facebook, I'm pretty, pretty hot on. Um, pretty, like I reply pretty quick on that. And then obviously there's the Instagram play, um, pages. So I've got the, the shreds one, which is like my personal Instagram, which I've just, Splattered all over the internet. So that's why. Um, and then the Sarah plays a base Instagram page as well, which I'm pretty good at messaging on. But yeah, I, yeah. If you send me a message, I will get back. I at some point. But yeah, I would never ignore anyone. But sometimes it does take a while. But I don't. I sometimes people get real mad and they're like, "Oh, you never reply." But I try. It just it takes a long time sometimes. Sure. And then she might reply back with, but why? With I know, like, like, why? Go go look at someone, like, actually amazing. Because there's so many people out there, like, that get missed. And it's sad, like, go. Uh, but, yeah, I just hello? hope everyone keeps an open mind. Because there are, like, millions of amazing musicians. And I hope they all get recognition. They should all get recognition. Just like you, Sarah Walker. <laughs> just like you. Don't ever take that away from yourself. Don McDaniel says, what about KFC? 
Oh, uh, what about? I mean, the minute I get a KFC endorsement, my life is over. Like my life goal is complete, complete. <laughs> but only if I get free KFC for like at least a year. If there's no actual free food, I'm not interested. They can find someone else. <laughs> Very cool, girl. All right, we're going to get this wrapped up. Do you have any last things you want to tell your audience, the people at home listening? I just want to say thank you, you personally, so much for finding me and calling me out and for letting me be part of Base Kids. Like, like obviously, like your sh- the Sunshine Show is amazing. You have some like super cool people that you get to sit and chat with. But Base Kids is just, like, I can be having the worst day and I'll go on Base Kids and I'll be laughing within, like, 10 minutes. And it just, it's so great. I'm so happy that you found me and I'm so glad to be part of it. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, so much uh, to hear from you. And I just love everything about you. I love what you're doing. Make sure you keep killing it. And we're definitely going to have to get back on and do another chat and and get an update with you soon. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap this up. Make sure to go follow Sarah on all her social media platforms. I will be dropping that in the comments. So go check her out after the show. Um, You guys, everybody, stay kind, be kind. Um, You never know the struggles people are going through. So try to always put on a happy face. Um, And if you got to go for a walk, that's okay too. Um, Make sure that you stay safe out there and you guys keep rocking and rolling. I love all of you guys. Sarah, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, girl. Bye.